Mm -hmm. Okay, I think it's on. Ah, hello everybody, the elections are over. Regardless on whether or not your guy won, it is, it is over. Let's talk about what Biden's foreign policy would be in Yemen because there's practically a genocide going on in Yemen. Sources in the description box below. Fun fact, we're gonna have to infer a lot about Biden's foreign policy based off of Obama, even though there's a lot of fake news that are, was widely disseminated on what Obama actually did that we need to have a conversation about. But Biden, God, this drives me crazy. I can already see my little hand movements everywhere every time I get like frazzled. There are no statements about what Biden's policy towards Yemen would be from Biden. I looked at his debates. I looked at his statements. I watch videos with private meetings between him and other people with only 500 views on them on YouTube. I mean, when I tell you, I looked everywhere. I mean, I looked everywhere. I even have like little, little notes over here. My computer just died there for a second. He has nothing, nothing at all. So we have to figure out what are we gonna do? Well, Obama, let's start with the fake news first. So Obama, there's an idea out there that Obama had 115 billion dollars weapons billion dollar weapons deal with Saudi Arabia. The the gets a little controversial because there's groups like the the Brookings Institute that are just, they're trying to be all technical and they said, "Well, technically, Obama didn't actually approve of an actual 115 billion dollar weapons deal. He created regulations that would allow for there to be a $115 billion weapons deal. <laughs> Look at how smart we are and how sly we are with our nice words. It's like, there's some figures that said he sold 40 billion out of the 115 billion offer. Some are saying 50, some are saying 90, some are saying 110. It's hard to say. But regardless, I think we can all agree that there's a substantial amount of weapons that were being sold. Now, why is that a problem? Well, Saudi Arabia is utilizing a lot of internationally illegal weapons, weapons that we said shouldn't be international, that should be internationally illegal. For example, cluster bombs. Cluster bombs take out entire towns are notorious for killing civilians. With the increase in civilian deaths comes the increase in extremism. And so more people are tempted to kill Americans as a result of the dead civilians. It sounds like that's pretty irresponsible. We probably shouldn't be supporting something like that, but that type of policy is supported because it creates $115 billion for US manufacturing, uh, lobbying, well, man weapons manufacturing companies and lobbying agencies. The drone strikes, by the way, that we're using, which say made in the USA on it as well. And so we're using them and Saudi Arabia are using it. So we don't actually, nobody really knows who, how often each one is using it. There's no official figures on the amount of people that are killed as a result of drone strikes. But the last thing that we know are leaked documents that said 93% of people who are killed from drone strikes are actually civilian. In addition, we have special forces there, excuse me, special operations that are there as well. <laughs> so that's the idea. It looks like that's probably going to be Biden's potential policy as well. Fun fact, before Trump, Obama actually had the record for most weapons deals or, or sold the most weapons since World War II. Out of every president from World War II all the way up to now, he sold the most weapons before Trump. I haven't actually looked into the official figures of Trump just yet. Now, what actually happened in Yemen? Well, there's a, a group called the Houthis. They took over the capital in Yemen and then Saudi Arabia. Do you guys hear that? I don't know if the camera picked it up. There's like weird people doing weird stuff above me. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, the <laughs> distracting myself. Yemen, Houthi rebels took over the capital of Yemen. Okay. Saudi Arabia said, well, we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump in and we're going to go save the day. If you imagine a schoolyard fight, one guy wins, and then the winner keeps trying to beat the guy until he's almost dead. That's the situation. There's literally my little nice figures here, like a nice, nice, nice intellect, even though I, yeah, never mind. Anyway, so 2.2 million people displaced. Where do they go? They go to regions that are then controlled by extremists. 10 million people on the verge of famine and death. 10,000 people dead from this civilians, 10,000, which is actually probably more like well over 100,000 and 10,000 additional kids who died from malnutrition and starvation. So what is, or what is Biden's foreign policy going to be like towards Yemen? Probably something very similar to that. I think this is an important conversation to have.
We should probably know something about that with our leaders. By the way, fun fact, YouTube has cut down my video recommendations by 70% because apparently I'm controversial media, even though I post my sources in the description box below. So if you could subscribe, I'd very much appreciate it because I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. Anyway, yeah.